Hello everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here playing Dragon Age by Green Ronin. I am Victoria, I am the host of Indie Showcase, so welcome everyone. I am thrilled to play this game. A, I love Dragon Age, love it. Like, I order, I pre-order everything, I get collector's edition everything, I wait in line at midnight, Mm -hmm. And then I, I actually, I've done this for every Dragon Age game. I have taken my vacation to coincide with the release <laughs> so oh, that yes. I can just play them <laughs> for a week at a time. So I'm thrilled. And then I'm also thrilled because I get to play with these amazing people, which I'm super excited about. So why don't we introduce ourselves um, and we'll go around starting with Envy. Hi everyone, I'm Envy. Um, I make little Let's Plays on YouTube, spotlighting uh, games by uh, women, POC, and queer and trans folks by or about. Um, and I also am the program manager for uh, the Games Hotline, which is a free confidential text-based emotional support resource uh, for anyone who makes or plays games. Oh, that's... That's amazing. Where where can we find that that resource? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so our website is gameshotline.org, gameshotline.org, and um, if you ever want to reach out, uh, you can text support to two three three six eight. Well, thank you so much for for spearheading that. That's wonderful. Definitely. And let's go to Candy. Hi. Uh, hi, I'm Candy. Um, I am the executive producer of Dicey Amazons Entertainment. Uh, we are a Twitch channel um, that hosts uh, something <laughs> seven days a week, either in our Discord or on Twitch. Um, <laughs> I also am the GM of the Dicey Amazons uh, TTRPG uh, streams as well. Um, and as far as Dragon Age, I've played through and beat all of them. Uh, I'm actually thinking about getting that Game of the Year edition because I actually have not done the, uh, the add-on stuff, so... I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So Jaws of Hackon. I, I know like a lot of people maybe didn't love that one, but other than Trespasser, it's my favorite DLC. Mm. That. I love that because the augers, the way they do um, mages in that one with the Avar are mm. really mm -hmm. cool. Oh, I could just nerd out about Dragon Age, y'all. <laughs> Is that not what we're doing? I... <laughs> That's pretty much what we're doing anyway. What? <laughs> oh. There's no game. This is just what you're getting for two hours. Yeah, Thanks perfect. for coming. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> Katie May. Hi, I'm Katie May. You uh, may have seen me um, DMing Dungeons, Dice, and Everything Nice. It's just a podcast wherever podcasts are sold. Check that out. And then um, you may have seen me with the Indoor Recess crew uh, who frequent the D&D uh, &D Twitch channel. Uh, we're playing through Mythic Odysseys of Theros right now. Um, I remember sitting my roommates down freshman year of college and being like, hey, everyone, Dragon Age Inquisition comes out tomorrow and I don't need you to be worried for me. <laughs> I'm about to not leave my dorm room and I need you to not worry about it. <laughs> so wow. that was, that. that's my, <laughs> I had to, because it was like freshman year so they didn't know me that well because it was still the first semester and I was like, I don't need like an intervention but I will be spending too much time on this game. So they got it, it was fine. <laughs> that's my Dragon Age nice. story. <laughs> Before nice. we before we get to Tanya, I am gonna say we do have one of our moderators here today oh gosh. behind me. This is where I come over and wave. Yeah, this is when you come over and wave. <laughs> they, they're they're so waving. Hard <laughs> 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 they don't have. They just moved. They don't have internet in their house yet, so they're using mine. Hell yeah! Hello. <laughs> I'm really this. And Tanya, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, uh, my name is Tanya, uh, also known as Cypher of Tear online on the internet. You may have seen me on Rivals of Waterdeep. Uh, we are about to do our seventh, oh, I'm sorry, our eighth season. Time has flown. Uh, I am actually the DM for season eight. We're starting September 27th on Rivals of Waterdeep's Twitch channel. And I actually also GM a weekly Dragon Age game over at uh, the Wandering DMs channel on Thursday nights, starting at eight Eastern. 
And oh God, I do way too much. Uh, the other thing I do is Dungeon Crossing, which is teaching people to play D&D, but in the basement of my Animal Crossing house. And that is on Saturdays um, with Gary Witta, Urban Bohemian, I'm sorry, Brian Gray, um, Shannon Woodward, and Adam Nickerson. And that is Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Central. And I've been playing far too much Dragon Age ever since the first game came out. And uh, when... Victoria started talking, I, I tried not to giggle because I took vacation when Dragon Age Inquisition came out and I bought a PS4 for it. And it's what made me start streaming. So Dragon Age is to blame for me being here on Twitch. Oh, Dragon Age isn't to blame for that. D Dragon Age has blessed us with that. Today we make Dragon Age answer for its crime. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. So, Tanya, you are yes. GMing today. Um, yes. So why don't you tell, um, A, well, all of us have kind of, except for, actually, except Envy, you haven't, you haven't played um, the Dragon Age games. So. Yeah. I'm new to this universe, new to this game system. I'm really excited. Yeah. <laughs> um, my my um, experience with Age, the Age system is limited. Um, I did like one game of dragon age it was very brief um and i did a few sessions of modern age but mm. that was some years ago because this game has been out for a bit now um and so i'm sure there's viewers out there as well who have never played this game so why don't you kind of break down the mechanics a bit because the, it is a little different from from other rpgs yeah so if you're used to like a d20 system like D D, it is very different you only use three six-sided dice to start, um, two of which are the same color, one is a different color, so that you know which one is your stunt dice. Um, and just to be clear, I am um, giving info that is available in the quick start guide that you can get for free on Green Ronin's website. And that includes a beginning adventure, kind of your stats and everything else and how to start. So if you like what we do today and want to go play it, uh, you can go buy it off Green Ronin's website and get this info that I'm about to give you. Because it's one of those things where you know it because you run it. You don't think about having to go back and explain it. Um, so basically, you have 3d6 and your ability score and your focus bonus plus two versus whatever target number your GM tells you you need to beat. So let's say if Envy, you do a stealth check. And I say, to avoid being detected, you need at least a 12. So you would roll your 3d6, and if you've got something in stealth, if you've made a rogue or a similar class, and then if you use a focus, and then plus two, well, in this case, your focus bonus is a plus two, if all that is greater than 12, you are successful. So kind of like when you roll a d20, and depending on the number, over whatever the DM tells you, you have to beat on a saving throw, same difference, except you're doing with three six-sided dice. So the most you're ever going to roll naturally is 18, and depending on what you do, that is going to give you some stunt points. Um, so if you get doubles on an attack roll, and this is attack rolls, you can do flashy things. So fun things like if you are using a missile weapon, I'm not sure what a missile weapon would be other than a bow in Dragon Age, but you can rapid reload instead of the usual, it takes me forever to restring my bow and, and knock another arrow. Um, if you're more of a melee fighter and you get stun, um, stun points, you can try to disarm your opponent. So if you're in melee range and you get uh, two stun points, you can go, I'm going to try to disarm them while we are grappling or fighting. Um, obviously, the more stun points you get, the more elaborate things you can do. Um, and this does include spells. So magic users are not left out. So if you're a mage or someone who uses magic, because, you know, Templars do some magic, um, so you can do things like cast faster you, instead of like the usual way to cast things. I knew it would happen. Um, hold on. That is my doorbell. But while I'm explaining that, why don't you all tell everyone who you're playing and I will be our being. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll start. Um, I'm playing after dusk hand. I am an avar rogue. I am a scout. And if you hear some loud noises, I don't know what's going on in the door behind me, but it sounds like my husband is like throwing things around and I'm very sorry for that. 
I'm speaking very loudly so he can hear me through the door. And <laughs> oh, stop. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That was I, I. I warned everyone that I had a FedEx coming, and they're the only people that ring the doorbell. And almost on cue, the minute we get started, of course, they rang the doorbell. It's fate, baby. <laughs> yes. Um, so, every, you were explaining who you're playing. Yes. So, I am playing Astrid Duskhand. I am an Avar scout. I am from the northern mountain region, um, just north of Ferelden. And, uh, well, we don't like Ferelden's all that much because they're weak and soft and squishy and. Yeah, they're, mm, they've lost their way, but I am a scout, so I am out and about um, in Ferelden. Are, are we in Ferelden? Yes, we're in Ferelden. We're in Ferelden. Um, I'm in Ferelden, um, just, you know, keeping tabs on what those dog lords are up to. Yes, uh, Envy, who are you playing? I'm playing Jelthrion, who is a rogue elf. Um, I'm a Saharan convert, uh, just uh, recently out of a job. Um, but yeah, out here look, looking for friends, looking for work, doing okay. my best. <laughs> yeah. Live, living your best life, living your best life. Got furloughed, yeah. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Lolo is hit for Alden. Oh. Uh, Candy, what about you? Um, rounding out the roads. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, I am playing uh Namaline Kittrick, who goes by Kit, uh, who is a uh, dwarf duster uh, rogue. Uh, I am originally from Orzammar and um, ended up uh, leaving there eh, probably about six or so years ago. Um, and have been around looking for uh, work as well, just kind of picking up whatever I could find on the notice boards and helping out around uh, for Alden. Okay. Katie. Um, I'm not playing a rogue. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm really happy to be rounding it out uh, as the one mage of the party. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm uh, playing Linares, um, and her very best friends can call her Lana. Uh, she uh, is a she left the Dalish. She is an apostate. She's currently going around saving up her coin in hopes of one day opening up a lyrium infused bakery. Um, <laughs> so she's got small dreams, big magic. That's Linares. So, question about the lyrium infused bakery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lyrium kills people and makes them go mad. Yeah, huh? <laughs> she's got big dreams. She's really, she's really, she thinks that the side, she, if she gets the recipe just right, if she cancels it out with some sugar, that <laughs> lyrium bakery is on the horizon. All the ex Templars will be knocking on the door. <laughs> exactly. Right? Samson's gonna be like, "Can I get a cookie? Can I get a cookie?" Exactly. Uh, oh my god, that We've is amazing. We've got a Mabari pup behind me. <gasps> oh, incredible news. I want to see a Mabari. Okay. <laughs> it is Mabari. the match for today. <gasps> wow. Oh, wow. Hi, pup. This is pristine. Oh, they're they're Ooh. growling. We're going through some training. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so we've got sound effects. Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, it fits the theme for what I've planned for you all. I've lost my cursor. Um, so before we actually get into gameplay, do we need any more mechanics? Since I was interrupted by the doorbell. I'm fine with tackling them as we come up to them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just want to be sure um, because I did not, ex I I half expected, half hoped that wouldn't happen. So I do apologize. Um, all right. So are we going to be able to see the map or no? Yeah. I can switch right over right now. Yay. Because I'm a terrible DM. That's always the very last thing I do is add maps. <laughs> Yay, you can see Ferelden. All right. So um, before we get started with the story, how does this ragtag bunch of people know each other? 
Well, if we're all saving up cash, I, it sounded like okay. jelly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Actually, uh, if okay. we're in it, if we're in it for that good coin, what is the name? Is it just gold in Ferelden? Yeah, sovereigns. 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 Yeah, sovereigns. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, gold or sovereigns. But weirdly enough, everything else is like the actual name. It's like a silver is a silver, copper is a copper. And sovereigns, of course. <laughs> sovereigns are <laughs> sovereigns are gold. Of course. Yes. Um, Got it. Um, so, uh, I was on uh, Ferelden's Fiverr equivalent. Um, <laughs> we're all just freelancers. Saw you all around. <laughs> yep, hitting, yep. Mm -hmm. So you're freelancers and you all wound up uh, traveling together because you figured if you're going to be like broken freelance, you may as well be together. Exactly. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're thinking uh, about starting like a freelancer co op. Ooh. Kind of band <laughs> our... <laughs> Okay. So, uh, our labor together. so, since you all are trying to form this co op, word has gotten around like on the Thedassian equivalent of Fiverr, except it's called like um, Sovereigner, which is weird, but nobody said it was a good idea. It is exploitive labor. And you all are, you're in Ferelden. You know, you, you do get some looks because of the canary in, in your midst, but you've been summoned to Fuldor Farms and uh, there is a map for it. I don't know if it Ooh, changes. Though. Yes. Yay, hopefully it changes. The, where, which one? Uh, Fuldor Farms, I just put the player banner on it. Yeah. Huzzah. Because I'm also a GM, I had to click on it. It's okay. Just give me the cue and I will click. Um, yes, but you, you know, this farm is on the outskirts of Ferelden and you got a very interesting missive to help someone find these lost Mabari pups. And you would think, who cares about Mabari pups if you're not from Ferelden originally or if you don't know the worth of Mabari? But it's a nice sum of money. Whoever wants these puppies wants them back really, really badly. And um, I'm gonna go, I should switch maps myself because I'm smart. Um, so this middle thing, this middle structure, almost like on the bottom right above, actually it's right above Katie. That is where the note told you to, to come and ask for uh, the farmer, Harold. And he is looking for uh, capable hands to help him retrieve these Mabari puppies. Are you all going to uh, take this job? Yes, Harold seems like a rich name. So we should get a lot of money from this one, is what I'm saying. I just oh, want yes. puppy kisses. Yeah, if we get to play with some puppies for a little bit. As I long as it's not standing in line again. No, no standing in line. Um, you get there, um, you, you've got his, his flyer, you know, for... For all of that, a, a cheap piece of parchment tacked to a chantry board is worth. You follow the very crudely hand-drawn directions to get to this farmhouse, and you knock. Um, who wants to, who wants, A, well, who wants to be the one to knock in answer? I've been practicing my authoritative knock if you'd like to hear it. Um, I think it's quite intimidating nowadays, um, if you'll get ready. Three simple. I've done it again. It's pretty efficient. Pretty efficient. Impressive. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You have mastered the knock. I'm trying so hard not to just bust up laughing. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> um, so after a few minutes, you hear an older man's voice call out, "Who's there?" Um, four four worthwhile adventurers here to solve your problems, sir. Well, I've got many problems. Which one are you here for? I think the lost puppies. Ah, yes. My my poor pups. My poor pups. The door opens and you see a elderly, not elderly, he can't tell if he's an elf. Um, but he's a an older, wise and looking elven gentleman who uh, beckons you in and points you at, at a large um, bench type table, almost like it belongs in a picnic area, but it's inside because poor Feraldans. Um He's like, come in, come in. You know, have a seat. Let me give you food and drink. You did answer my job. Tell me about yourselves. Why Why should I trust you to go find my lost pups? 
puppy kisses. That sounds like you want to keep the pups rather than rescue them. No, 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 no. no. Temporary puppy kisses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As we would uh, love to bring them back to their uh, their home. Mm, who are you? And he he looks to you. Well, he doesn't know your names, but he looks to you. Yeah. Uh, and and your name would be. Oh, I'm Kit. Um, been traveling around doing a lot of jobs uh, to help people out, and uh, it seems like you need some help. So that's what we're here for. He, he looks over at at Envy's character because he doesn't know their names yet. That is player knowledge. Um, and you, who are you? It's so good to meet you. I'm Jelly, um, and you know, saving puppies is is our passion here. Um, it, with our with this this very very worthwhile group of adventurers, um, to, like totally see your your vision for this for this upcoming project, and um, I just I think we're totally the right like total like eye to eye. Um, I think we we're the best we're the best crew for this job. Uh, fully fully bought in. Thank you so much. Uh, really looking forward to working with you. And he just gives you a nod, like, mm hmm, mm hmm. You, the one that wants temporary puppy kisses, who are you? I am Astrid Duskhand of Rifthold. Hmm, Rifthold. Haven't heard that name in a while. You seem a bit far afield. That's my job. Someone needs to keep track of everything that goes on. Don't see many of our out and about. The Sky Mother is everywhere. True. Very, very true. Very true. And you, the one who knocked. What's your like, story? Did, did One, did you think the knock was authoritative, or do you think it still needs some work? Needs some work. Okay. Um. Thank you for your honest feedback, first and foremost. Second, I would, I'm, I'm Linares. Uh, it's really lovely to meet you. I just like to sort of, um, you know, plus one everything that Jelly just said. I think we're a really capable group who would love nothing more than to handle your small problem with our big capabilities. I actually spent the walk over using my last piece of parchment to uh, write a resume for us in which um, I uh, include my small stint of dog walking when I. I was 12. So I'm just going to slide that resume across the table. And he just gives you that kind of, uh, okay. And he, he humors you and picks it up and he, he opens it and he, he takes a moment to scan through and it's like, tis Im impressive, tis impressive, but all of this is this frippery. This is not needed. I just need you to go find my pups. Okay. Um, their, their mother is on the back porch. She could probably be of assistance. They either wandered far afield or someone stole them. What do you, what do all of you know about Mabari? Smart dogs. Smart. I mean, they're they no are Paula, but like, I guess they're kind of cute. Well, no Hala here because it leans in to use like, can't trust the Shem won't maybe eat them or try to make clothes out of them. Mm. Oh, I get it. So it's like, but look, their, their sire was sold off to breed more puppies and then the three little ones weren't the same after the sire was gone they broke up a family and i'm afraid they may have even gone to try to maybe find their sire i don't know they were just gone and they're usually good pups and their mother is sulking it's not the same without them so that's why i'm offering more than you know a lot of people would for some lost dogs It shows mm -hmm. your good character. Yes. Um, so he actually pulls out a, a crude map because maps are expensive. You wouldn't have a nice, lovely illustrated map. 
Um, you see the, the farm that you're on now, and then one road leading out to Denerim, another road leading somewhere. It's not marked on the map, but it, it's not leading there. Basically, the road that he's pointing you at is leading toward the city, the, the big city. Denerim's not far away. I can lend you a cart and a horse. And more than likely, if they ran to look for their sire, they would have tracked him to the city. Or if someone absconded, they would have taken them to the city to sell them. You're looking for three pups, one gray, one black, one brownish gray. So how recently was the sire how recently was the sire sold off? Well, he was sent off about a week ago and the pups disappeared about 2 days ago. Mm -hmm. Um so they've only been gone a couple days. Mabari puppies are very smart, but mm -hmm. when we go out the back, you'll see the state their mom is in with mm -hmm. them being missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Broken families are hard. Maybe they joined a group of freelancers. We'll, we'll, we'll help you find, we'll help you find these pups. And he just tilts his head at you like they're puppies. <laughs> they, they, they don't yet have training or vocation. They're too small to be full grown, full-fledged war dogs yet. So- uh, looking off into the distance blankly. <laughs> Oh no. You get it? <laughs> like, like you are right there? Oh no. This happens sometimes. You just have to kind of roll with it. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> hopefully this will not interfere with you bringing the pups back. Oh, no, I not at all. That. We are, we're passionate about, we're passionate about this work. Passionate. passionate. Puppy kisses. As, as you all are, are reassuring Harold, he's becoming more and more concerned about the fact that you showed up to get these dogs back. Um, it's like, well, we'll come, eat first. I'm not gonna have you starved on my watch. That's very um, he's been cooking, oh. there, there's stew. Um, clearly it's like druffalo or some other meat you would be used to. And you know, it's it's nice, hearty, rich stew, something that will fill your bellies. Um, if any of you would not like to partake of the stew, um, you should let him know. Otherwise, he's going to give you four heaping bowls and uh, some bread. It's not super fresh, but it is uh, it is nice bread and some ale if you partake in ale. If not, there's um, tea or water to be had. I consume it. I just immediately just hop. <laughs> I give Astrid most of my bowl. Thank you. <laughs> I can't burp I... on command, Victoria, but Astrid can. And she lets one out. Powerful. Mm -hmm. I get tea instead of ale, uh, and, but I also eat the, the stew uh, hearty. Okay. <laughs> Our other two party members, do you partake of this of this unexpected boon of, of a hot meal yeah i think uh been skipping some meals so uh definitely appreciating this and just eating it with gratitude absolutely and some nice tea what could go wrong mm -hmm. nice um you know he he also has a bowl he is uh he eats a bit more sedately and he's walk he's kind of watching all of you because He's just like, I, I just need y'all to get puppies back. This is moderately scaring me. Um, so after everyone's done eating, he leans back. He's like, so, you know, I don't want to be rude, but y'all don't seem like a group that would normally travel together. How, how'd you meet each other? On the road? What? Mm -hmm. Safety. Well, we and all have a common interest um, in securing it's... funds for either something specific or just to live. 
Um, and so we're, since we're of the same business, uh, we decided, yeah, safety in numbers. Um, and we could probably get uh, more things done faster. We're friends with dreams. All right, all right, I can, I can understand that. Well, if you, uh, if you are full, I can show you the cart and horse you may use. And, you know, if we can get their, the pup's mom to join you, then, uh, then you can be on your way. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's her name? Carol. That, that was on the, that was on my notice. Oh, I don't read. Astrid does not read. All right. I do. I do most of the reading. Um, what is what is the mom's name? No, oh, while we're asking about names. Hmm. This is the GM going. I didn't think you'd ask me this. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> so sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, the the mom out there, uh, Verania. Verania, a beautiful Verania. name. Yeah, she's named after uh, a few elves, uh, well, not a few elves, but an elf that a few of us have come to know thanks to her brother's exploits. A fitting name for one that acted such as she did. But yes, if you, if you come with me, we can try to get her to join you in the cart, and then you can be on your way to Denarim. Sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Lead the way. Um, he leads you through the house to the back door. And there's like a, a full grown Mabari dog there. She's like grayish. She's like that that not quite, she's like gray, but not quite dark enough to be black. Mm -hmm. And uh, she stands up and gives kind of a woof. Kind of like, who are these people? Because I mean, Mabari are, are frighteningly smart. They are war dogs. And uh, depending on how well they're trained, can understand common or understand whoever trains them. And so she comes over and like kind of headbutts him, kind of like, who are these people? I crouch down and put my hand out. I don't have to uh, crouch down that much because Mabari's are huge. <laughs> right. Um, she, she looks a little skeptical and she like sniffs the air and and reaches out and sniffs at your palm. Ah, good dog. And I go to like, give that scritch right behind the ear where the neck is there that's hard for them to get. And I scritch it. Nice firm scritch with my big FR six foot one, 205 pound lady hands. Um... So she actually like at first she was about to like dodge because like ah a new person trying to touch me, but then she realized what you were gonna do and she's like and she like flops over a little bit and you you hear the foot thumping. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she she's okay with this as long as you keep giving her scratches. Oh, I give all the scratches. My um, attention is on this dog. Um. So, uh, what are the rest of you doing now that the doggo has been sated with scritches? I turn to her all and I say, a sign of good fortune that the rest of this quest should go quite smoothly. Uh, I actually walk over to the dog as well, um, but being a dwarf, the dog is probably larger than me <laughs> by a bit. <laughs> and um... so I, <laughs> I'm three foot four lovely yeah yeah you're you're probably looking the dog in the eye if they were looking the dog in the eye okay yeah yeah i mean mabari are, are not small animals yeah. <laughs> and so yeah i actually uh just on the other side of the other ear so he's now getting or she's now getting uh double scratches <laughs> okay i'm gonna make uh, sure the dog is comfortable with uh, several of us the dog's in heaven the dog is totally in heaven um so what are you all so the dog's getting crutches from two sides yeah. um and harold is he's just getting the cart and the horse ready he sees that the dog is is okay with you all and uh soon you hear the clop of a horse 
coming over and uh he's like yeah who uh who's good at driving a cart well i don't think i should drive after what happened to the last cart so maybe someone else i'll drive all right um like the horse she's good she's gentle she's she's used to you know, being sent to market and someone else bringing her back so she should behave for you. And uh, he uh, taps the, the cards like, Verenia, come. You're going to help you find your pups. And uh, you see a little stubby tail wag and uh, she leaps onto the cart because she wants to get her, her puppies back. We can see your character sheet. I know because someone in chat is asking about it, so okay. I'm showing it off. <laughs> okay, I was just being sure. The last time I did that, it was by accident. So <laughs> no, I'm showing it off. There is a Dragon Age uh, character sheet in Roll Twenty, so you just click on it, and um, there are you, the rolls show up automatically. <laughs> okay. I think as we're, we're packing up and getting ready to leave, um, I, I turn to Harold and I'm like, thank you again so much for letting us take on this project. We won't let you down. Um, again, like really excited for your, for your vision on this. Uh, and I, I, I pull out like, like three or four like handmade business cards that were like all written out um, <laughs> and just kind of like leave them on the table and uh, like, I'm sure we'll we'll be in touch in no time with uh, regular project updates, and uh, yeah, uh, reach out if you need anything. And he just like stares at you, <laughs> like, uh, okay, Harold, Harold, Harold. We we got. I this. turn around and we're, hop onto the cart. <laughs> we got this. And he's and he's like, aren't we'll, you coming back? Yes, we will bring the pups back as soon as we uh, as soon as we have them. Okay. He's Please. more concerned by the moment by you all. Just so yeah. you know. <laughs> Actually, um, do any of you have like a um, not sleight of hand? What would it be? Do you have any kind of any of you have any skills or focus like cunning, deception? Well, you're not really deceiving him. Right. But something to kind of reassure him that you're basically not going to steal his cart and horse and uh, run off or never come back with his puppies. I have persuasion as a focus. Ooh, that do it. Uh, yeah, because yeah, after the, like the random business cards, <laughs> and the way I don't know if I have the one. <laughs> I mean, if you if you have uh, if you have skill and persuasion. Because you can tell he's like being kind of hesitant now watching you all. Like, you sense he may even be about to be like, you know what? I'm just, I may just go look myself. No. As I'm still scratching and I'm like mm -hmm. rubbing the Mabari's face, being like, oh, you are good. No, no, no. We'll do it. We'll bring them back. Every pup needs their mom. So you hopped in the cart <laughs> with the dog? You're yes. already like yeah. in the yeah. cart. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we're building great rapport. All right, bye. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. This Start like rolling the cart. As the cart's going, I'm, we're not gonna let what happened to the last cart happen to this cart. You don't oh, have no. to worry about it. We'll see you soon. You see, you just, the last thing you see before you roll too far away is this very concerned look on his face. Like I'm never getting that cart back. <laughs> Um, so you all are, are rolling down the road that is leading away from this, this farmhouse and you're headed toward Denerim. It's, 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 while it's not far away, it is, um, it is about an hour or so to ride there. So what are you, what are you planning to do to get these dogs back on this hour long ride to, to get the Mabaris back? 
I don't have a lot of ingredients or an oven here in the back of this cart, but I I will try my best to scavenge up something to make some nice dog treats to perhaps lure in these sweet pups. Uh, I need you to role play how this is going to work. Making dog treats in a cart yeah. on the road. I, I need to know how this is going to work. I have some jerky. I have like one pound of it. I will take your one pound of jerky, please. And then just let me know when just like a really long, stable path of road is coming up. And that's when I'm going to try to get all the important cooking done. Um, so just... hold on. this. Hold on. So you're going to try to cook or bake in a wooden cart. Mm -hmm. moving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I need you to roll play this. I need you to not just, I need you to role play this. Yeah. And um, you have nothing that would help with this. I sincerely do not. No. <laughs> oh, boy. All of your focuses are not on this. Um, I'm going to need you to make me a dex check. <laughs> the one thing I have a zero <laughs> in, of course. Yes. Um, no, you, you decided to try to bake in a rolling wooden cart. You're Listen, gonna pay for that. I respect it. <laughs> um, yes, um, so I'll just uh, I'll just set this metal pan out and then I'll just use my magic, but only a little tiny bit. It'll be totally safe. Uh, and then here is a dexterity roll for us all. Um, is a seven. Wait. Okay. Magic? Did I hear magic? No magic in this car. <laughs> Who's doing magic in this car? I said it'd be safer than last time. On. <laughs> you were about to ruin another cart. This time with remember. magic. <laughs> you know you know why we have this rule. Do you okay. remember why we have this Fine. rule? No magic in the cart. I get it. We'll just we'll just use the jerky. We'll just use the jerky as um. the tree. So who's putting out the fire that's trying to this <laughs> The dog is barking at <laughs> you. There's smolder, there's smoke now in this cart. Uh, I will start putting out the fire. <laughs> oh Sorry, my I just, god. I just get really excited to bake and then the, and then that excitement just channels into a lot of fire. And that's kind of why I'm saving up for like a space, a fireproof space in which to do my baking. Um, oh my god. I'm okay. just looking forward to jerky baked goods, to be honest. I'll, I'll do better next time. That's my promise to you. Thank you. All right, just just work on that. I'm making a roll. All right, I think I I think I pull the cart over. <laughs> Since it's on fire actively. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Is so, the dog okay? <laughs> who who the has the dog? The dog's fine. The dog is barking. Like, it's not a full fire, but there is smolder right now. Mm -hmm. um, but because you suddenly pulled off the road and you are in a busy road to and from the city, you do attract attention. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I you. think the, f I, you know, is it the pulling over that's attracting attention or is it the like fire in the car attracting attention? <laughs> Can we really know, you know? <laughs> Um, at this point, it's a smoking cart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, and the fact that, you know, as someone passed by, they would have heard, like, the kind of sudden lurch of a cart, because carts are not yeah. quiet. Yeah. Um, if you've ever seen a medieval era movie, you know that carts are giant things. And so the lurching of this cart off the road and the, and the smoke and the, and the, and the smoke, that it, the smell of it, has got the attention of a couple guards and a Templar. Oof, oof. Okay. I I pull out like two matches and I like strike them and I put them out really quickly. Are there matches in Dragon Age? What is it? Flint? No. <laughs> um, what is I I gosh I have to remember no. what they use on Survivor. Flint. <laughs> um, <laughs> um. Oh gosh. Oh no. Okay. Remember, I'm the fourth rogue in a party of just intrepid rogues. <laughs> say to everyone as I see Yes, Templar your staff work. is a bow. Yes, I tie a it's string a on the end bow. of it. It's a bow. I tie it's a string. old Dalish trick. <laughs> Long club. <laughs> so, as, as you all are trying to put out this, this beginning fire, you have a loudly barking Mabari 
And, you know, there is the suit and smell of, of a fire that is being put out. You're, the cart didn't catch on fire, thankfully. But you're not returning this cart in the good condition. You just took it away. Um, the two guards notice you and they're like, hey, hey, what's happening over there? Why, why is your cart on fire? Oh, oh. no, no, no. It's, it's no. not on fire. Absolutely not. Um, just a little mishap, a little bit of smoke. Um, we're fine. Some wayward flint, you know, how that goes. Yeah. And the Templar looks suspicious. Wayward flint. Why would you have wayward flint in the back of a cart? Uh, well, see, I pulled out that instead of my whetstone to sharpen my dagger, because, you know, it's boring back here in this cart. Usually I walk, but they were like, no, that's weird. You should ride with us. So here I am. Even still, they, it wouldn't have caused a fire. Well, there isn't a fire. It's just smoke. Yeah, it was just smoke. And the Templar is getting more suspicious. <laughs> um, he's gonna he's gonna walk around the cart, and um, Astrid, give me. Oh God, what's a good check for this? Oh. Is everyone so we? I don't want to make you, and I I totally clicked on the right, wrong person. Someone's character is not in the game. Um, Linares. Yes. Do you have anything where you could kind of break the Templar's concentration or do something that would Lure him away from the cart. Oh. <clears throat> oh, gosh. I don't know if I do, because all of my stuff, I, I could, like, arcane a tree, <clears throat> arcane bolt a tree, and then we could just <laughs> we could just get our cart moving run. again. But Make I don't know forward. how well that would no. work. If you... <laughs> If you if you arcane bolt a tree, I will tell you this is a gem. That's basically going to get you right in the chantry and yeah. a brand on your forehead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a really oh. short game. Yeah, real, um, real short run for Linares's hopes and dreams about a Lyrium bakery. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk to the Templar because uh, okay. I I like getting out of the driver's seat, um, talking to this cop. Like, hey, hey, like, uh, how's how's your day going? Um, I'm I'm Jelithron. Uh, really, really excited to see you guys on the road out here today. Um, you know, uh, thank you so much for for noticing us pulling over and 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 offering to kind of like uh, to just check on us. I, I feel so much safer uh, be, because of because of your presence. Really, really grateful. Um, actually, uh. We just printed these uh, so business cards. I would love, I would love to, uh, lo love if we could kind of um, just, just as a, just as a, as a thank you, uh, you know, just wanted to show, show my appreciation. I hand him a, uh, a, a handmade business card. Made, made that one myself. Um, would you actually like to hear a little bit more about, um, about kind of our. Our, we're actually I was trying to start a like a, a group of freelancers. I think still like workshopping the name, Stop. but. Uh, you know, the, the uh, Templar just holds up a hand. Is like, uh, no, no, we, we stopped <laughs> because we saw smoke. And I'm, I'm not sure this this smoke was not started by a magical mishap. A magical Ooh. mishap. No, I mean, the whole, I mean, so, I mean, we were actually thinking of calling our freelancer, you know, one of, this was just thrown at, is it not, you know, not trying to speak for the group or anything, but, you know, like, rogue, ro four rogues, four rogues doing doing freelance, mm -hmm. you know, four rogues freelance co-op. That was actually, because, like, because we're all, all just rogues out here. Yeah, yeah. So you see on the back, you can see um, the smoke signal way you can get a hold of us. Yeah, oh, to totally. <laughs> Can I so, roll persuasion? <laughs> oh my god, I was going to make you. Yes, please roll persuasion. Because <laughs> I'm just like, I'm not buying it. Trying to win, Oh, oh 
Oh. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is it? Because I can't quite see. Six, it's a 16. 16. Oh, yeah. You that totally are bamboos. Yeah. You are totally bamboozling this Templar. <laughs> the more you talk, the more he's into it. He's like, he's like, yeah, maybe Templar should have a union. Yeah, to totally. Yeah, totally recommend, um, you know, organizing, you know, we, we can build power together collectively, you know, and um, and part of that is like getting to kind of choose your own branding. It's been super freeing to be creative. Like, for example, the smoke thing, we're trying to work it in as like a motif. So, um, you know, my my fellow rogues were just like back there practicing, practicing some nice. of that. Um, yeah. And, you know, because you rolled so well, he's just like, all right, all right, you know, go go on about your way. Hopefully, you no, know, mind the mind the practicing your smoke in a wooden cart. Be mindful there's a place you can get it fixed once you get into town. If, as long as your wheels are fine, be on your way. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Again, so grateful that you came and checked in on us. Um, keep 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 a hold on to that business card, and. Um, Thanks again, sir. We'll we'll see. We'll we'll be on our way. And uh, the Templar and two guards go go about their way, and they're just they just look back once, like rogues, man, rogues. <laughs> and uh, you can travel the rest of the way into Denerim unaccosted. Um, if we could have a switch to the Denerim map, please. Yes. Phew. Um, so this is obviously a a not quite time of day for where we are in dinner room, but it's it's a map it'll work. Um, so you all get into dinner room, and it's it's busy. It's kind of bustling, and you know you notice the your Mabari companion um, looking around and sniffing the air, and with a bark. She hops down and seems to be kind of looking right down the street from where you are um, trying to leave the cart to park it and, and see what you're doing in um, in town and where you can find these doggos. Oh, I think she's got a scent, y'all. Uh, you all ready? You all have everything? Yep. Always so. ready. All right, let's go. Pull some hay over the singe marks so nobody can see them. Good idea. And then leave the cart parked. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, and a uh, quick reminder, we are raising money for our code for 2040. Uh, and not that far from the goal, only $220 from a $1,500 goal. So if you're watching us Ooh. and enjoying this, uh, please make sure to drop any spare bucks. Every dollar makes a difference. There's no donation too small or too large. So just $220 to hit that goal. Um, so yeah. And, uh, you know, after these messages, we are back to your attempt to find these Mabari puppies. You see Verania, like, not getting distressed, but she is, like, sniffing the air and... And kind of looking at you and looking forward and looking at you like, hey, you, you following? What are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just like yeah. Following. following. Following the dog. Um, the dog's okay, well, watching you, us. Yeah, so once she realizes she has your attention, um, she doesn't take off at a fast trot, but she's she's got her nose up and she's setting the air. And she's walking through the streets a little confidently. You know, she... She is a dog, but she's a Mabari, so people are getting out of her way. And uh, so the four of you are trailing after this Mabari. Are you uh, making note of anything as you trail after her, or are you all just focused on following the doggo? I want to kind of keep track of, like, all the turns that we're making, um, just so we can kind of find our way back. Mm -hmm. I'm watching okay. for people. I'm well, there are people out. Um, people who are specifically noticing the dog and us and might be interested in the dog. Ah. Uh, uh, give me an investigation type check. Okay. So that would be cunning? 
Yeah, roll it under and use your cunning bonus if you have one. Okay, so how? I don't, but. 13? Nice. Um, you notice a couple gents that look a little too interested in this dog. You know, it's it's Ferelden and Salt Lake Mambari are unusual sight, especially not in a big city like Denerim. You know, after the Great Wardens have been around, they're not a surprise. So the fact that they're paying this dog attention is something you catch out of the corner of your eye. I um, memorized, like, I use, like, my scout skills um, to memorize the look of them, like, what they're wearing, any noticeable features on their faces. Um, one is Elvin, a little dark skin. He has a gold hoop in uh, the tip of one ear. The other is a nondescript human male, you know, the kind of guy that you'll see and forget immediately. Mm. Scruffy clothes, not really paying attention. The elf would stick out a bit more because he seems better off than most elves that you've come across, you know, in your travels and in towns. So he doesn't seem like he is part of the alienage, but he's kind of worldly. So they are, they are definitely taking notice of this doggo that is leading you all down the street. I keep tabs on them. All right. Um, anyone else want to either check or are you just following uh, Berenia? I think I'm just following. Okay. Um, so all of you are following the dog and as she gets toward the more seedy part of town, she goes faster. Oh. And you almost have to jog to keep up with her. She doesn't want to lose you. <laughs> But she is she is moving faster, and um, Astrid, you notice that your shadow is with you. Mm. The faster the dog goes, they're they're not being as cautious. We're being followed. I say quietly to everyone. What um, by who? Yeah, an elf and a human. About five o'clock. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so I'm rolling to see if they <laughs> notice that. <laughs> like, you all are the worst spies. <laughs> we have two spies. scouts in here. <laughs> <laughs> Scouting. Come on. <laughs> um, that, is, that is to your advantage when one die rolled off my table. <laughs> um, I rolled my actual dice because I'm so used to doing it. That is a 12. They know that you're onto them, but not which one of you caught up to them. Okay. Caught onto them. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, they're in a hurry. They don't want to lose. They're more focused on the Mabari than you all. Mm -hmm. um, they figure maybe you're trying to grab this Mabari too. They're not thinking you all are with the Mabari at all. Mm -hmm. So... Um, she is moving faster and she comes to an alleyway and stops and growls. So in front of you, you've got Verania, the Mabari, and then along the rooftops, you see your two shadows who stop when the Mabari stops. Ooh. <clears throat> I've played enough Dragon Age to know what's happening here. But I can't medicate. Me. Um, I'm Astrid is suspicious. I'm very suspicious at this point. Um, like I'm I'm a gruff mountain person um, who doesn't really like being down south um, where the soft weak people are. But this is where my hold needs me um, to keep tabs on things and bring them news. Uh, so. At this point, my hand is sliding down to the hilt of one of my throwing knives. All right. Um, what are the rest of you doing? I yeah. actually... Good. Oh, I, I think once um, uh, Lana sees Astrid pulling out her weapon, I think that mm -hmm. I've got my quarterstaff at, at sort of, I'm pulling it out slowly as well. Uh, I pull out uh, my dagger, but I kind of keep it uh, hidden 
So okay. hopefully it doesn't look like I'm actually holding a dagger. Okay. But my attention, I like, I, I see them, but my attention is still with um, the Mar Mabari and mm -hmm. like the direction that she is barking. Okay, and um, yeah. Jelly, what are you doing? Um, I think uh, I think I'm I'm kind of looking looking around the surroundings to kind of be get a better sense of um, just like where we are and how that context plays into like what we're looking for. Because um, I'm I'm worried about pups at this point. I think. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to roll and see if they notice you all kind of pulling out weapons. Oh, you're lucky they did not. I have two stun points, but this is not combat. So for now, they're unaware that you all are ready to scrap. Um, but the Mabari is just rather stoically standing there just growling. Like she knows her puppies are somewhere, mm. but she's growling and she's not moving forward. So, what would you like to do? If I start walking down the alley, does she follow? Um, she does, but she's cautious. And she still has that low, you know, like when dogs mm -hmm. are like, they're both angry and afraid. Yeah. Like that low throaty growl is there. Okay. She's not threatening you, but she knows yeah. something isn't right. Right, yeah. Okay. So are you moving forward in the alley? Uh, I want to continue moving forward, um, but cautiously. Uh, I, I actually want to try to be a little quiet at this point. Okay. Um, since you are intentionally trying to be quiet, give me a stealth roll um, and add your dexterity. Mm -hmm. Uh, 14. Okay, you are quiet. You are, okay. you're imagining to be quiet. I mean, they know you're there, <laughs> but other people are not going to notice you. Um, the dog is, is patting on very soft feet and just kind of keeping pace with you and uh, looking like side to side, like she's not 100% sure where, where she picked up her pup scent. Um, the rest of you, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm watching the people up on the rooftop because at this point, um, in like my internal monologue is like, just throw the dagger at the guy in the thigh, then he falls, and then you interrogate him and ask him where the pups are. Done and done. But I'm also realizing that I'm in a major city. There's lots of guards around. So I'm calculating the risk. Okay. Um, and uh, so what I do instead um, is I motion to my other sneaky friend. Um, let me open up Zoom so I can see what everyone's names are. Uh, Kits. Um, my other sneaky friend, Kit. And I'm like, circle around back. Let's get him from behind. Um, Kit has moved ahead of you at this point. Oh, yeah. well, I move up nonchalantly. <laughs> I try to play it cool, like, yeah, I'm just walking down this alley, like you do. Um, and then I murmur that. Okay. Okay, and uh, what do you do with that information? Um, I say, okay, um, if you want to head back to the mouth of the alley... Um, I'll continue around. I'll leave uh, Verenia. And uh, if you want, I'll continue around and see if we can get the jump on them. Sounds good. Right. And okay. uh, I look around as if I'm looking for a place to go to the bathroom. Like just tent. I know, but like I'm an uncouth person from the mountains. No one knows. Uh, they expect this of me. I'm covered in white paint and blue and everything. So um, they don't know. 
they, they expect these things from me. While these uh, shenanigans are going on, uh, Jelly, what are you up to? Uh, I think I'm kind of flanking the flanking the hound. Um, still kind of just like uh, kind of keeping her protection um, top of mind. Um, I see, I think, ahead that uh, my fellow rogues are uh, whispering and, and, and stealing furtive glances at the, at the shadows. Um, but I, I want to make sure that the dog doesn't get lost in the middle of this. Okay. And God, I almost called you your real name, Linaris. Um, Linaris is on team distraction with Astrid, I think. Team, team, keep your eyes over here, please. Just a lot of bold movements, confusing mo- movements to keep their eyes on us. Okay. Um, all right. So for those of you trying to attack your, your shadows, what's your, what's your next move? All right. Hopefully I can get around to the other side of the building where I'm no longer in sight. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then come up to the other side of the building. Um, you said they're up top. So um, probably try to find a, a quick and quiet way up. Okay. Um, give me an investigation. Let's see. What is that one in here? Um, it would, if you had it, it would probably fall under um, cunning. Cunning. So add your cunning bonus. Or perception. Oh yeah, you're right. Perception. Perception. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking okay. cunning more because of the the situation. Oh yeah, because mm-hmm. we're That's true. True. Yeah, I can roll that instead. That's fine. If you already rolled, that's oh. fine. What did you get? Okay. Uh, fifteen. Yeah, you, you know, despite being, despite being a dwarf and it's kind of daylight and them knowing you're there, you manage to uh, flank them. So you're flanking. Um, Astrid is on the other side and um, you are now flanking your two shadows. What do you want to do and are you initiating combat? I kind of want to say something first. <laughs> say okay. something cool. Yeah. Say something cool. <laughs> All right. So I uh, <clears throat> sneak up behind them, uh, clear my throat, and say, is there a reason you two gentlemen are following us? And uh, the human looks at you as like, same reason you thought you could, you know, sneak up on us. We see you tailing that Mabari and we trying to do steal it. It's our dog. Then why are you traveling after it like it's not with you? We're traveling with it. Hmm. She's leading us to something, if that's what you're think you're seeing but the dog is with us so I don't think you have any business here if that's what you thought and he he looks you up and down he's like look this is our territory we're watching you in case you try to steal that dog or steal from us who are you? It's none of your concern. Can I hear this from down below? Oh yeah, they're not trying to be quiet. It totally is our concern. You told uh, master it. The elf looks over the roof and is like, and who are you? Uh, it's none of your concern. Got him. Oh, so funny. So good. Um, the elf is like, so be it. <laughs> Just know we're watching you. Have you seen one? I think our friendship got off to the wrong 
start. Hi. Hello. I could be a great friend to you, if so you wish. I could also be your most terrible enemy. Um, but don't question me about that. I actually, what, sorry, I got off topic. What I wanted to get back to is, have you seen any other Mabari around? Uh, the elven rogue just kind of like gives you a, a frown. It's like, go back to whatever okay. rainbow and unicorn okay. place you came from. Oh boy. All right. That, that was hurtful. Uh, oh, boo hoo. Okay. You didn't answer my question. Did you see any Mabari around or do I have to ask louder and with more violence? Oh yeah, violent, sure. Whatever. It sounds like I mean I'm again one hi, hi. I'm I'm Jelithron. Um with with these uh other friends here, all friends here. Um it sounds like you um were really looking out for the welfare of this of this Mubari and so grateful, so grateful for that concern. Um we actually we're also really passionate about um, the welfare of Mubari hounds. Um, so, you know, I think, I think we're, we're kind of on the, we could be on, on kind of the same, the same side here, you know, similar vision. Um, yeah. They just look at you, Jelly, like what in the absolute void are you on? I have some business cards. <laughs> Oh my God, they do not care about your business cards in the least. <laughs> and I, I, try to like, I try to like frisbee one up, but it just like kind of comes back down. <laughs> um, the, the elven, the elf is just like, y'all are weirdos. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, again, back to the big question I'm asking, have you seen any other Mabari around? Puppies, specifically puppies. And the human dude is just like, I don't know if we should tell you, you're weird. We're all Mubari. We all care about Mubari here. Like, love these puppers. So passionate about about uh, at this point because right. they are just kind of saying we're watching you i and ho hopefully they're not going to be trouble if they know the truth hey there's some missing mubari puppies we are here with their mother to find them that is why we are with the mubari and puppy kisses <laughs> Yeah, that's not helping really. Um the the human dude like just rolls his eyes like I don't know if I want to tell you anything. Your friend here is threatening us. Not that we're concerned, but that's not how you make allies in Ferelden by I started with friendship. And he just like waves you off. He's not concerned with you at all. Um and the elf is just like, look, we don't know anything about any Mabari puppies. All we saw was you all skulking through our territory following a full-grown Mabari. It was weird. So uh, we don't know if you're trying to steal this dog or what you're weird. Nope, the dog knows us. We've bonded. And I like, like, hey, pup. And I reach my hand to give scritches. Um, unfortunately, she is very focused on finding her puppies, yeah. so she, she gives you a little. She gives you a little bit of a growl when you try to reach out to her. And uh, as this this back and forth is happening, she like crouches down near the ground and then just takes off like a shot toward the end of the alley. Oh, gotta go! Okay. Bye. Yep. <laughs> I, yeah, go zoom in also on the rooftop and mm -hmm. make my way down quickly and say, and just give them like a curt wave. <laughs> Hopefully they will leave like, us alone. 
Um, they, they're just like, okay, we don't know where these weirdos came from and we're just gonna like stay here and see if they come back this way. And if they don't after a while, maybe we will see what they're really up to because they don't believe you at all. They're like, yeah. y'all are, you're interloping on our territory. <laughs> um, but they just like, they just kind of hang out on the rooftop and start yeah. playing cards or like, we're gonna give this an hour. If they don't come back, well, then we'll figure it out. Um, so after they have, after you have left them and bolted down after Verania, um, what you come across is the sounds of other dogs, other Mabari, and maybe other just regular non warhounds. And you hear growling and you hear whining. And you see Verania like pawing at what looks to be a gate. You know, if she had thumbs, she could have easily opened this, but she's just like, you know, like when dogs really want out and they're just like pounding on things. Mm -hmm. That is what she's doing on a, on a gate. Can I go open the gate? Can I go, can I, can I like peek? Is it like slits or anything? Can I see through it or? or um, how it tall are you again? I, 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 a comfortable five, five, eight. Yeah, if you look, if you do go up to the gate, you can look over it. Um, but, okay. Uh, give me. No, I'm not gonna make you roll for it. Um, look over, look over the gate, and you see um, cages, and you hear whining, and you just see that brain is getting more and more agitated, and you remember what Harold told you about the pups. So huddled in one of the cages are the puppies. Mm. And um and you hear what sounds like like other dogs barking, other like Mabari maybe, but you just hear a lot of animal noise. Um, but you know, if you can get Verania away from the gate, you can probably just open it. I turn back to the group and I say, our puppies are on the other side, but also a lot of other animals too. I don't know who's doing this, but it makes me really sad to see all those animals over there. Do we have to free all of them? That's what I'm insinuating. Are I they know. in cages? Yeah. Oh no. We must Did you see them. like locks on the cage or just like they're latches? They're very simple locks because okay. you know no one's expecting them to show up and try to help um try to help these dogs so they're very simple kate latches so you can open the um you so you can open them and feed the dogs and, and close it very quickly so it's not like it's going to take you a lot to get get the get the animals free assuming no one finds you liberation liberation right, so. for all dogs all right, so there's about six cages. Um, one has all three of your Mabari pups because they're, they're still puppies. They all still fit in one cage. And you've got a couple other cages with like medium grown, medium teenage Mabari. And then you see one that's just like a regular dog that seems to be just like, well, this is my life now. I'm just chilling. Oh. And uh, oh my God, please don't say that. I would freak out. <laughs> I saw the chat and I was like, no, no one's walking behind me. I freak out. I live alone. Um, and uh, yeah, so you see just, there's about six cages and then there's a doorway into what could be the rest of the alley or home or something. But um, yeah, but there are six cages and there's many uh, Mabari and a regular dog to free if you would like to do so. Do you think we yeah. can fit all of them in, the, in our cart? They're dogs, they can walk. Oh, that's true. That, it will, yeah, if we can get them all back to the cart, we don't know if they're all gonna actually follow us. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, we have, that's what the jerky is for. The jerky. Oh, produce the right. jerky. We do get jerky. All right. I all paid it. good silver uh, coins for that jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Should we try to sneak in? Um, I mean, if you, again, as long as you give Verania kind of, because she's just excitedly like, she knows yeah. her puppies are there. Yeah. So you need to uh, kind of try, try to, to, try to. 
okay. theater away. So I, w- I would recommend our Avar friend. Can yeah. you, you the one to do that? <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And then uh, I'll handle the gate opening. In no way large enough to <laughs> corral a full grown Mubari. All right. All right. Uh, Astrid? Yes. Will you? Astrid? I offer some meat. Here you go, doggy doggy. If you want your puppies, you gotta move. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make one roll. I mean, unless. Yeah, you want a treat? Yeah, you do. Yeah, a T R E A T, except I'm gonna say it treat. Yeah, jaw for you. Um, yummy, and yummy. Luckily... Luckily, she is uh, swayed by a treat, and she uh, she gets it and uh, follows you away from the gate to uh, see what tasty morsel you are offering. It's jerky, okay. but it's like you know, I'm I'm like feeding them raw. You know, it's like it's good for you. Yeah. So uh, you now have access to the gate if you would like to. Um, release the hounds, as it were. Yes, I open the gate. Get in there. Okay. All right, so are you all opening these cages stealthily, or are you just, like, flinging them open? Um, I think we want to be kind of quiet about it. We've already drawn, like, some attention we didn't want, so. Yeah. (laughs) Jelly's trying to be quiet about it. Yeah. Okay. Same. We're rogues. We can do it. All right. I should make you all roll, but that would just be dirty. Um, <laughs> and the rolls have also not been particularly kind to all of you. So <laughs> for the sake of fun, let's. I want you to role play this Mission Impossible Dog Rescue. Hmm. Okay. I'll be the lookout because I'm bad at unlocking things. I know you all tried to teach me lock picking, but I'm, I'm still not great at it. I'm the lookout. Go, go Lana, there are only latches. There's no locks. You can go oh. There's simple, simple locks. There's yeah. some, okay. Right? Let's All go. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't have I don't have binoculars. I'm just doing this with my eyes as I look the lookout. <laughs> All right. So uh what is okay. this what does this dog rescue look like? Yeah, I think we I think we sneak in. I think we want to get the the puppies we're looking for first, right? Yeah. Well, if, if you're letting them all out, you're letting them all out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. I think <laughs> we tiptoe in mm-hmm. and slowly lift the latch. Like, don't want any rattling. And try to get the get the treats. Wait. Astrid, get the get the treats ready. Get the treats ready. Okay. So they don't make a lot of noise. Here you go, doggy, doggy. <laughs> I got some treats for you. Get something in their mouths so they're not too oh too my. loud. And I give them jerky. <laughs> okay. Right. And I start pulling a latch uh, as well. Uh, I'm gonna get the the solder, the one that's like, oh, it's you know, this is life. <laughs> uh, kind of chilling dog. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm gonna pull the latch as well. Have jerky in the other hand. So as soon as it opens. Um, you know, uh, hopefully he comes in and takes it and then just kind of grab a hold of, uh, like the scruff of the neck and just sort of lead him out like real slow. Okay. And you all are doing that for all the same, all the dogs? Yeah. Liberation. Yeah, just going, going down the line. Okay. All right. I try to get uh, kisses when I'm feeding them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to roll and see if you manage to do this, do some of this successfully or not. I'm also assuming Verania followed us in because I feel like. Oh yeah, she uh, uh, she is thing. nuzzling her puppy. Okay. All right. She's licking them like I my my babies. She has them back. Okay. She's a very she's a very happy Mabari mom. <laughs> Um, and she even is carrying one by like the scruff of his neck, yeah. and the other two are kind of like they climbed on her back. So like, mom, Aww. happy scent. 
So if nothing else, she's got her puppy. She's, yeah. she's like, deuces, I'm out. <laughs> um, luck is with you all. The dice are not lucky with me. I've been rolling real dice, by the way. And um, you managed to get, you know, all of the puppies and, and dogs um, freed. Some just shoot off in different directions because they've been captive. They, they were just picked up on the street and they were being... Um, bread and people were running a puppy mill and some of them have just shot off. There's one Mabari puppy that uh, lets you pick it up, Astrid, and seems to be content to let you hold it and carry it. Cutie puppy. Um, so you have uh, managed to rescue the dogs and you, if you follow basically that pathway back because um, Verenia knows the way back to the cart. So, you know, it's she knows it by scent. She knows it belongs to Harold. So you do manage to come through the alleyway and the, the human and the elf that were kind of checking out to see what was what, they look down and you're like, so you found your dogs, huh? Yep. Told you, we were on the up and up. Puppy, puppy. That's all we're here to do. Look, it's for Elden. There have been magisters here trying to, to drug elves and take them. You all are strange people. We're just looking out for our city. Good on you. Do you, do you want a dog? We've got like a surplus with no homes. Do you? <laughs> are you looking for towards adopting or? No, no, no. Our lifestyle doesn't lend itself to dogs. Understandable. Mm -hmm. And uh, the elf gives you like a nod of the head, kind of like the Dread Pirate Robert, where he's like, you know, you're not a bad person. I'm glad I was wrong about you. And uh, heads off the roof, kind of like, all right, I got other things to do that, now that we know you're not a danger or a threat. And uh, the human, the other, well, the human is just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And he like gives you a respectful nod and follows after the elf. And uh, yeah. So I give him a respectful nod back now that, you know, <laughs> we seem to be on better terms. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're just protecting their home. They don't yeah. know who you are. Uh. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to roll and see if anyone notices this parade of, of Mabari. I mean, it's not like a Disney movie and there's animals surrounding you. It's more like there's a couple extra dogs with you and Verania's leading the way with her puppy. She's very happy to have them back. Oh, the dice are on your side today. Huzzah. They're, 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 no, some people look up and think it's weird, but then it's Ferelden. They survive the blight. As long as you're not darkspawn walking around, they don't care. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, you get back to the cart. Mm -hmm. it, it's still a little singe. You know, you, you didn't have time to get it repaired. Oh, no. Um, the hay that you used to cover the burn mark is still there, but you know, it it is a little smoky from from what you did, but you know, still smells. <laughs> I still love smells the like... smell of campfire. Maybe we'll let him yeah. keep a couple of sovereigns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the is not going to be thrilled with you <laughs> at all. And uh, you know, Verena actually lets you help the puppies into the cart because they're they're still small Mabari. Your wee Mabari. They can't quite climb up with their little stubby legs. Uh, Jelly, are you driving back? Uh, sure, unless someone else wants to drive. You don't want me. I'll to drive. Yeah, I'll drive. Yeah. I'll after drive. Last time. I, I, I'm going to keep an eye on Lana. Okay, but no, no fire. <laughs> no okay. fire. Okay. Repeat no. after me. No fire. Yeah. Of course. Seatbelts on. Okay, let's go. I'm just like seatbelts exist in Feral. No, no. Just for this cart. <laughs> just just for Lana. <laughs> yeah. You just find a random belt and it's just for you. Yes. <laughs> um, I will right. conjure some water for these pups to drink. <laughs> as long as it doesn't in involve fire, you no. can do that. Awesome. Brilliant. All right. I'm going to roll and see if you come across anything in this hour back to the farm. Um, that is that is only five. You are safe. 
You don't even see the same Templar and soldiers you saw on your way into town. Oh, there it um, is. The real dice have failed me. You you go to dice jail. And uh, you make it back to Harold's farm. The only incident being having singed his cart. Uh, so we could go back to the farm map, please. Yes. Farm map coming up. Here we are. Beautiful, so I remember it. Yay. Lana, you, have it. you got any like scents, scented ingredients, you know, fragrances that we could kind of maybe use to kind of, you know, add in some extra car fragrance? Oh, yes, of course I do. I pull out my <laughs> box of ingredients. Got some perfect Pharrell and spices and flowers here that uh, mm. I've got some elf fruit. Ooh, I'm testing my knowledge. Ooh, I've got some. Oop, that's it. That's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, that's, deep that's mushrooms. Small. And anise, yeah. because deep mushroom and anise little cakes. Ooh, yes, they're <laughs> delicious. Oh, that's so not gonna help. But okay. Um, <laughs> but you, you pull up, sprinkle some of it around. <laughs> oh my god! And, and cover the singe marks. I mean, it kind of smells like dog in this cart now. We've got a lot. Yeah. We just, okay, dogs, can you just roll around? Just, just dogs roll over. Just at you and Get just like, to play. <laughs> no, that's so not going to work out. Um, the dog, like, Rania just wants to, like, get back on the porch and, like, take care of her puppies. Um, and so, as, you know, the cart is not quiet, so Harold does hear the cart pulling up. And he also wants to, like, get his horse, check on his horse, check the cart over. Make sure that you're back because you've got the puppies and you didn't horribly fail. And he comes out and he notices Verena in the car. He's like, oh, you, you found her and, and the puppies, but wait, there's extras. What? Why did you bring extra dogs? Guys, this one's mine. His name's Puddles. He left and the you can, yeah. And you can keep Puddles. I just wanted my puppies back. We've I'm not sure what you're going to do with these extra dogs. It was liberation. I, I, we <laughs> thought you'd be excited. No. Do your yes, your your puppies dogs? were your puppies were uh they we we found them kind of in a in a cage like a multi cage situation. Um, looks like looks like some 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 n no good news breeders out there. Um. Well, Mabari. Oh, yeah. And you know, and if we were gonna, if we were gonna free them, how could we leave these behind? You know, if uh, so, that's you, you don't you don't have to keep them. Uh, yeah. Do your neighbors need some dogs? And yeah, yeah anyone, you know anyone? Dog. My nearest neighbor is is about five kilometers away. You can you can wander down that way and ask him. I I just wanted my dogs back. We and sure I, got okay. it. All right. And so he walks around to the back of the cart and he sniffs. Uh, Harold, um, <clears throat> there was um, a bit of an incident. Um, the cart still rolls fine and, and carries things just fine. The um, horse is in great condition. But yes, horse is in great condition. But in our planning, um, the cart got a bit singed. Um, and so... You know, if you would like to keep, we were going to get it fixed, but we didn't have time. We got the dogs like pretty quickly, and and so if you maybe want to keep a, a few sovereigns to to get that fixed, if you you know, <laughs> and I just kind of like trail off, like yeah, smoke uh -huh. signals, yeah, yeah, um, smoke signals in a wooden cart. Who were you signaling? People who need to organize, you know? Maybe the templates. The, the, the templates puppies. Needed to the puppies can't read smoke signals. We only found that out after. And he rolls his eyes. He's just like, how did you all get this far in life? How? Uh, it's a mystery. <laughs> it, it truly is. Well, go on in. Get washed up. And you know it's late. You you can stay. I've got a spare, 
a spare couple of rooms and then in the morning you can be on your way oh uh thank you harold uh and, and wait we lana um no no more smoke signals please of course not not though now that we have all the sweet pups why would we even need them okay just i just so, want to, to reassure harold no no fire if if you do try to use fire magic in this house, it will be the end of you. Ooh. Magic. Understood. Never heard of her. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Besides, we don't need fire. Uh, we've got lots of dogs to keep us warm now. That wasn't the point. <laughs> he just sighs deeply, like the deepest of deep Dalish old spiritual sigh. He's like, I got my dogs back. I got my dogs back. This hog remembers I got my dogs back. And he uh, wanders into the kitchen to, to see how dinner's faring. Because he also didn't think he'd be back that soon. He figured he'd be gone at least one or two days, maybe looking for the dogs or coming back with bad news about the dogs. So dinner's cooking, but it may not be enough for five people. So you hear him muttering, you hear some clanging around in the kitchen. He's like, putting on another pot and seeing what he can throw in another pot. And, um, you know, when he has figured out what he can cook you all, he's found like a game hand or two. He throws that in the brick oven. And uh, your story ends with him serving you a lovely dinner and thanks for getting his puppies back. And you yeah. solved the case of the missing Mabari. Yay. Yay. Yay, puppy. Yay. Um, and just so everyone at home knows, that is not official. That is not anywhere in the book. I literally made that up this morning. <laughs> you go find some missing Mabari puppies. If anybody would like to try to run this, I could try to write it down to what I did. But this was all theater of the mind and all ad hoc. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much for running this for us. This was a delight. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank I'm glad you. you had fun. And I, I'm glad we were able to do something nice and light and silly. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. So yeah, as as you mentioned, we are raising funds for uh, Code 2040. So please, if you can, throw a few dollars away. It helps uh, mm -hmm. people of color um, to break into the tech industry. So... Oh. That was me being clumsy. Oh. Um, so while we are uh, wrapping up, does anyone have questions or or feedback about the game? Because I was totally silly and just ran with it and had fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any. Well, there is that little bit of delay. While we're waiting, if anyone does have questions, while we're waiting for those, why don't we go around again, um, say who you are, what you do, where we can find you and your work online. We'll start with Candy. Oh, hi. Um, I'm Candy. Uh, I am the executive producers of Dicey Amazon's Entertainment. Uh, we are a Twitch channel. Um, there's six of us. <laughs> uh, and we stream uh, TTRPGs, video gameplay, talk shows, um, the whole lot um seven days a week between our discord and our twitch uh so we have a lot of fun in our channels we're everywhere is uh that i see amazons um so you can find us there um yeah <laughs> katie may hi i'm katie may you can find me uh i'm with uh, the stream team indoor recess you can find us on indoor recess uh on twitter but with three s's at the end um i'm over streaming on here on twitch i do a lot of variety streaming you should come uh hang out with me i'm actually currently playing dragon age origins you can come meet uh brini my uh apostate elf uh who is uh just as much of a mess as lana is if you'd like to uh catch me over here on twitch.tv slash okay may Envy. Hi, um, I'm on Twitter at Envy Plays Games. Um, I make YouTube Let's Plays of indie video games uh, featuring people of color, women, and trans and queer folk. Um, and uh, I also am the programs manager at the Games Hotline, the Games and Online Harassment Hotline. Um, you can find us 
at Games Hotline everywhere on the internet or at gameshotline.org. Um, and if you're ever wanting um, emotional support as someone who plays or makes games, you can um, talk to someone who is ready to listen and also uh, has an understanding of like games culture and the industry and stuff. So you don't have to explain yourself. Um, you can text uh, support to 23368 uh, Monday through Friday. Um, from 4 to 7 p.m. Pacific in the U.S. And Tanya, RCF. Hi. Hi, I'm Tanya. You can find me here, uh, not here, on my own Twitch channel, Cypher of Tear, where I do a variety of things. Lately, variety has either been uh, The Division 2 or Animal Crossing. There's no good or in between. Um, then um, scheduled streams are Thursday nights over at Wandering dm where i dm dragon age where fenris is the inquisitor and uh we just got anders back and it's a very interesting time in skyhold right now so that is thursday um with our wonderful cast saturdays uh 10 a.m pacific 12 p.m central uh dungeon crossing where we where i teach new players how to play DD, but in my animal crossing basement so we have a lot of fun with that and that's about three hours then on Sundays, uh, Rivals of Waterdeep right now is doing Kids on Bikes, where uh, Masood is teaching us how to play that. We did our session zero last week, our first session with our very 80s mystery town that we put together is uh, this Sunday, uh, hashtag sponsored by Blue Microphones. And then September 27th, we are back with Rivals of Waterdeep, our regular show. On Sundays, I'll be the DM, so who knows what's going to happen. And uh, we're doing shows at PAX Online and um, D&D Celebration. So follow us on the Twitters. Uh, mine is Cypher Tier, and the show is Rivals Waterdeep, no OF, because that's too many letters for Twitter. <laughs> and I am Victoria Rogers, the host of Indie Showcase, and we will be back next week at the same time as always uh, with the North Sea Epilogues, which is a very narrative based uh viking game so yeah um, check that out at next time and you can also find me over at the broadswords and all woman and non-binary uh rpg podcast we're uh just finishing up our D, D arc and then we are going to be moving on to uh cypher systems uh by money cook games and we're really excited and we're gonna go from fantasy to sci-fi because we're all mass effect fans and why oh not? yes <laughs> so thank you for joining us everyone and i noticed that all of the questions were more along the lines of how much experience you get if you kiss fenris um how um, many dogs did we at least 13 right 13 xp sounds about right to me um, i did the math on that right if you kiss Fenris, at least in the game that I'm running, it's a lot of XP because you, you keep your heart. Um, but Harold, the character that Simon was playing, is currently lost in the in-between and the crossroads. So we can't ask him this season, but ask Wandering DM on Twitter. I'm sure he'll be happy to tell you <laughs> how much XP and ask him about Baloney and Fenris and see what happens. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we will see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.